8. MV Hoyita Built in 1931 as a wooden luxury yacht for American film director Roland West, the 69-foot-long, 21 meters, MV Hoyita, or Little Jewel, was named after its owner's wife. It was called to duty in World War II and served as a naval yard patrol vessel. After the war ended, the Hoyita fell back into private ownership as a fishing and trading boat. Its last voyage came in 1951, when it left Samoa for the Tokelau Islands with one working engine and a cargo of medical supplies, oil, food, and some other items. It was already running a day late due to mechanical problems, and the 27 crew members and passengers were eager to get going. The 270-mile, 430-kilometer journey should have taken two days or less, but the Hoyita failed to arrive at its destination as planned. It never sent a distress signal, and an extensive search and rescue mission failed to turn up any sign of the missing boat. Five weeks after it became overdue, a merchant ship captain spotted the partially submerged Hoyita more than 600 miles, 970 kilometers off course. Its captain, crew, and four tons of cargo were nowhere to be found, and all the lifeboats were gone. There was some structural damage to the vessel, and the radio was tuned into an international distress channel, but the radio's cable was broken limiting its range to about 2 miles, 3.2 kilometers. The starboard deck was covered in mattresses, and there were some bloody bandages laying next to a bag of first aid supplies. The Hoyita was in poor condition, so it wasn't surprising that it had encountered problems at sea. But the boat was extra buoyant thanks to its cork-lined holds, so there was little chance of it sinking and the decision to abandon ship made little sense to investigators. They theorized that the captain may have somehow become incapacitated or injured, and was unable to tell everyone that their safest option was to stay on the vessel. But the missing crew and passengers were never found, and their fate remains a mystery. 7. Carol A. Deering Built in Maine in 1919, the five-masted schooner Carol A. Deering ferried coal and other cargo between South America, the United States, and the Caribbean, just two years after it hit the seas for the first time. The 255-foot-long, 77.7-meters ship ran into trouble during a storm off the North Carolina coast. Using a megaphone, a crew member told a lightship keeper that the Deering had lost both its anchors and asked him to pass the word on to the ship's owner. It was the last time anyone saw or heard from the crew. Three days later, the vessel was spotted off Cape Hatteras. It had run aground, but rescue ships were unable to reach it for several days due to the weather conditions. When a crew finally reached the Deering, they were puzzled to see no sign of the captain or crew. The lifeboats were gone, along with the ship's logbook and the crew's personal belongings. It was evident that they had abandoned ship in the middle of preparing the next day's meal, indicating that something suddenly went very wrong. The ship's rudder was disengaged from its stock, and the steering wheel was shattered. To this day, the crew's fate remains a mystery. Some believe that perhaps pirates or communists kidnapped the ship's crew, while others blamed bad weather. But we'll probably never know for sure. After failing to salvage the Carol A. Deering, the Coast Guard declared the ship a navigational hazard and blew it up with dynamite. 6. Ocean Wave On July 9, 1975, Dutch artist Bas Jan Adder departed from Cape Cod, Massachusetts for a solo transatlantic voyage in a 13-foot, 4-meter sailboat called the Ocean Wave. He expected the journey to Falmouth, England to take around two and a half months. It might sound crazy to attempt sailing in such a tiny boat across an often unforgiving ocean, but that was exactly the point. If Adder completed the trip, the ocean wave would set the new world record for the smallest boat to cross the Atlantic. But he failed to reach his destination on time, and as the months passed with no sign of him or the boat, 
people began to suspect that he either wrecked at sea or staged his own disappearance. Some clues to Adder's fate finally came in May 1976, when the crew of a Spanish fishing trawler found the ocean wave off the Irish coast. It was partially submerged and covered in barnacles, indicating that it had been adrift for at least six months. Crew members from the trawler boarded the boat and found rotten food and some of Adder's personal belongings, but he was nowhere to be found. The fishermen towed the ocean wave to Spain, but it was stolen before any investigative work could be carried out. Adder's body was never recovered, and there were numerous theories about what might have happened to him. During an interview with Avalanche Art Magazine in 1985, his wife, Mary Sue Adder, said that she was fully confident that her husband didn't purposely harm himself in any way or run away and start a new life. Considering the size of his boat and the conditions of the Atlantic, all signs point toward him dying in an unfortunate accident at sea. Some people are terrified by the idea of sailing across an ocean alone. To others, it sounds freeing and enjoyable. How do you feel? Let us know in the comments below. But first, be sure to subscribe. 5. MV High Aim 6 In January 2003, members of the Australian Navy spotted an 80-foot, 24.4 meters fishing vessel called the High Aim 6, drifting aimlessly in the Indian Ocean. A team of sailors went on board to investigate and found that nothing seemed out of place. There were no signs of foul play, and the ship's valuable tuna cargo was left untouched. But things didn't exactly add up either. The ship was at full throttle. Its main gas tank was empty, and its auxiliary tanks had not been activated. The entire crew was missing, and their mysterious absence led to speculation that they had fallen victim to a mutiny. Personal belongings left behind at the scene suggested that nobody had planned to leave the ship for any reason, suggesting that someone caught the crew off guard and forced them off of it. A few months earlier, the High Aim 6 had sailed out of Taiwan for Indonesia, where it picked up eight crew members. From there, the vessel departed for the Marshall Islands, the last contact with the ship happened about three weeks before it was found adrift off northwestern Australia, far from its last known location. Craig Kennedy, who lives along the coast, told the New York Times that mutinies weren't unheard of when it came to Indonesian boat crews operating under Chinese captains. He said that one of the only things missing from the High Aim 6 was a high-frequency radio which would normally suggest that the crew may have fallen victim to pirates. But nothing valuable was taken, and there were no signs of a struggle. Investigators discovered that a cell phone belonging to the ship's engineer had recently made calls from Indonesia. Further evidence indicated that as many as 10 men had been recruited to carry out a mutiny on the ship. Detectives were only able to track down one of the recruits, who claimed that the mutineers had killed the captain and the engineer. He provided few other details and offered no motive for the crime. 4. SV Seabird One of the earliest known sightings of a ghost ship along what would eventually become the east coast of the United States came in 1750, when a vessel called the SV Seabird ran aground at full sail on a Rhode Island beach during its return voyage from Honduras. According to some of the most popular versions of the story that's been handed down over the centuries, the ship was found near the shore with minimal damage and coffee brewing in the galley. There was no evidence of foul play or a life-or-death emergency. Yet, the entire eight-member crew had vanished completely. They left behind a dog and a cat, who were found alive and unharmed. But there are conflicting accounts of the story, and it's unclear which details are factual. In 2014, an anthropology blogger called Esoter X researched the seabird. The findings revealed at least three reported years for when the ship ran aground. 1750, 1760, and 1860. One version of the story claims that there was a parakeet aboard the ship, in addition to the dog and cat. 
The name of the vessel's captain has been listed as John Huxham, John Husham, and John Durham. There are also varying claims about what happened to the seabird after it was discovered. In some narratives, it sailed or drifted off into the ocean on its own and was never seen again. According to other accounts, the ship was salvaged and used as a commercial vessel for many years. One version holds that the seabird was captured by the British, renamed, and converted into an armed military ship. Researchers have managed to identify details that are more likely than others to be true. For example, the ship's owner is often identified in stories as a privateer or merchant named Isaac Steele. Historical records show that a man by that name was in Rhode Island in 1747, which fits the general timeline for the seabird's mysterious appearance on the beach. And while various other pieces of information point toward the legend of the ship being rooted in a true event, experts will probably never be able to fully pick apart fact from fiction. 3. Bell Amica In 2006, the Italian Coast Guard discovered what appeared to be an antique sailing vessel called the Bell Amica drifting off the Sardinian coast. A boarding crew found piles of clothing, a half-eaten meal, French maps of North African bodies of water, and the flag of Luxembourg, a tiny landlocked European country situated between Belgium and Germany. An investigation revealed that the vessel was owned by a man from Luxembourg named Franck Royaru, but it had never been registered in any country. Detectives also realized that the Bella Mica wasn't an antique ship after all, but a modern boat worth around $600,000. It was in perfect condition, begging the obvious question of why it was found drifting in the Mediterranean with nobody aboard. The Bella Mica didn't match the description of any vessels that had recently been reported stolen or missing, leading authorities to suspect that Ria Ru had abandoned it on purpose to avoid paying taxes on it. He denied the allegation, claiming that he anchored it in deep water and returned to Luxembourg to deal with a family emergency. Roy of Roos said that he planned to return to the yacht as soon as he had taken care of things back home. Authorities didn't seem to buy his story, but it's unclear whether they ever got to the bottom of the situation. 2. M.T. Jiang Seng In early 2006, an Australian Coast Watch aircraft spotted a drifting ship southwest of Queensland in the Gulf of Carpentaria. Customs officials boarded the derelict 262-foot, 80-meters vessel and found no crew members aboard. There were no signs of illegal activity, violence, or distress, and there was no evidence to suggest that anyone had been on the ship any time recently. The boarding party identified it as the MT Jian Seng, but they were unable to determine the ship's nationality or port of registry. It was inoperable and had a broken tow rope hanging from its bow, indicating that it was being towed when the rope severed. The ship was most likely abandoned at sea. A large supply of rice on board suggested that the vessel may have been used to resupply fishing boats. With no owners coming forward to claim the Jianseng in the weeks following its discovery, Australian authorities towed it to deep waters and scuttled it. 1. SV Cause 2 in April 2007, Captain Des Batten and his brothers Peter and John Tunstead set sail in a 39-foot-long, 12-meters catamaran called the Kaz-2, with plans to spend the next two months sailing around Australia. They began the voyage from the Sunday Islands off the Queensland coast and headed toward Western Australia, where they all lived. But the trio didn't get very far. Just three days later, the Kaz-2 was found idling roughly 100 miles, 161 kilometers, off the country's eastern coast. Near the Great Barrier Reef, the vessel appeared to be in good condition, other than a ripped sail. But Batten and his sailing partners had vanished, leaving behind scattered newspapers, a laptop, clothing, and other personal belongings. There were also no signs of foul play, but there was a half-empty cup of coffee on the boat, indicating that something unexpectedly interrupted an otherwise normal day. Some people speculated that the brothers had encountered pirates or drug smugglers, 
Others theorize that they staged their disappearance as part of a scam to collect insurance money. The missing men were never found. An inquest concluded that Peter and John Tunstead most likely fell overboard while trying to untangle a fishing lure from the boat's propeller, and that Batten probably fell overboard trying to rescue his brothers. A coroner determined that the three missing sailors died in a freak accident, but in the absence of their bodies, and because the ruling was made based on circumstantial evidence, some people continue to suspect that something more deliberate or sinister occurred. To Des, Peter, and John, sailing around Australia sounded like the trip of a lifetime. Thanks for watching. What did you think of these ships that disappeared without a trace? Let us know in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe. See you next time. Bye.